Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, we will dive deeper into for loops. So to start with, the, I will show you a nested for loop. Now, in this for loop, the outer for loop runs through 1 to 11. Now, as I have said earlier, this will iterate from 1 to 10 because it is half closed, half open interval. It's a range which is inclusive on left hand side or left side and open on right side. So 11 will not be included. But if you look at the second loop, there is an equality sign here. 1 dot dot is equal to 10. Now, this kind of range is inclusive on both ends. That is, it will run from 1 to 10. And then in print, uh, we am printing ij and i into j. So fundamentally, it will uh, give us tables from 1 to 10. Now, one uh, more thing I want to discuss is that how actually it runs. So first, when the code will start, it will go to uh, line number 2, that is this line and i will become 1 then it will come to this line and j will become 1 and it will print 1 into 1 is equal to 1 after this at this point j will be incremented and it will become 2 and then it will print 1 into 2 that is 2 and it will continue till j becomes 10 it will become 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and it will print 1 into 1, 1 into 2 and so on till 1 into 10. At that point j will become 11. Now since j will become 11 it is outside this uh, iterator range. So the loop will not continue, the inner loop will not continue. By inner I mean this one. So now it will come here. Now i has remained 1 uh, through this uh, looping of j, i remained 1, j changed from 1 to 10. Now i will become 2. Now when i becomes 2 and inner loop is set again, j is restored to the value of 1. And then it will again continue from 2, 3, 4 and it will print 2 into 1, 2 into 2 and so on. So that is how nested loops work. Let's run this program and see. So you see, first it runs like this, and then i becomes 2, j iterates from 1 to 10, i becomes 3, and so on. So at the end, if you see, it would print up to 10 into 10. Now, some all the loops which we have seen till now have operated on a single variable, but sometimes you might want to iterate on two variables. So for example, we could have, uh, we could run two parallel loops like this. Let's say we have range 1, range 1 is 1 to 10 and we have range 2 which is also 1 to 10. Now what you can do is, you can take the tuple here and you can say range 1 dot zip range 2. Now this is quite similar to zip function of Python. In Python also you zip two different ranges and you get two variables to loop over those. Okay. So you can say print uh, 11. And then you can say print this for me. So it will print 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, and like that. So yeah, let's run this. So you see, this is how you run two variables in a loop. Okay. Now, one more thing is that how do you break out of nested loops? Okay. So let's go here. Let's get our old code. 
So suppose I'm running two loops and I want to break out of inner loop. How do we do that? So suppose I want to print only up tables up to five. So I can say if I greater than five, okay, we can have a variable let flag is equal to false. And here I can say flag is equal to true. And after this loop, I can say if flag break. Okay, this flag has to be immutable. All right. So now, if j becomes uh, oh, sorry, i becomes five, this flag will become true, and it will break. So uh, let's run this. Okay, there is some error. Okay, j a new variable j. Is there any error? No, it's a warning. Okay, we are not printing it. It's not print alone. Print ij. Okay. And we save it. Ah. So it prints from 1 to 10, then it goes up to 5. Oh, it should not have gone to 5. If flag, flag is equal to true, if i becomes greater than 5, then flag should be true. If flag is true, then it should not have printed. Okay, it has not printed. So, what has happened is, uh, it has not printed more than uh, 6. So, what happened here is, i becomes 6. So, 6 is greater than 5, flag is true. And then it in, it prints that 6, 1 it prints. And then flag is true. So, it will break. But for the value of 6, it will continuously run this. Okay. So, if you want to do this, you need another break here. Then it should work nicely. So, you see now that i become 6 and uh, when i become 6 it should not have printed this um, so i is becoming 6 j becomes 1 this flag becomes true it should have broke exit from the loop it should not have printed 6 Back on this I'm not sure. Oh, I have not saved the program. Okay, so I had not saved the program. That's why it was giving the problem. So now you see, if we break at the inner loop, when i is greater than five, it will print only up to i five. But if you don't give this break, this loop will be broken. When uh, for uh, for six, it will print, but after six, it will break out of the outer loop as well. So that's how you get out of uh, loops. But this is one of the classic techniques. This is an old technique. There is a better technique in Rust. So for example, what you can see, if you mouse over this for loop, you can see this. There is a label here, outer. And if in the inner loop, if x is equal to is equal to y, break outer. Okay, so here what we can do is we can remove this. Sorry, don't need to remove that. So we can say that break. Okay, and here we can say outer. So let's see how we have. We don't need this also. 
we don't need this flag anymore let's see how this works out right so you see it behaves the same way it breaks out of the outer loop okay and you might think that it is a jump but if you look at the description it is not really a jump it is not really a go to okay this is not a go to save in the documentation okay so this is how we can break out of deeply nested for loops to arbitrary outer loop and it's a very niche technique you don't know need to do the flag nonsense the flag nonsense uh, uh, is actually used where this label based facility is not there for example in c in c you can use go to but that's a bad idea so it's a very neat uh, feature of rust that uh, you get to break out of uh, inner loops very easily so we have covered uh, quite a few things here one is nested loops, then iterating two loops in parallel, and then uh, how to break out of deeply nested loops. Sometimes you will need three levels of for loops. For example, in matrix multiplication, you will need three levels of for loop. Ideally, you should avoid nesting for loops because if you have two levels, it, that means it is O n square complexity. If you have not studied data structure, then uh, understand this that n is linear, o n is linear in terms of time taken, n square is quadratic, n cube is cubic of course. So the time taken will increase by an order of magnitude with each for loop. So you should always, always try to avoid nested for loops. Sometimes it cannot be avoided. Try to limit it to two, maybe. Even for matrix multiplication, for example, you suppose you are really doing matrix multiplication. For example, you are doing AI or something like that. And you want to multiply two match pieces. Don't do it in the naive method. There are several algorithms which have the complexity of n to the power 2.4 or 2.38 I believe. Now you think that n to the power 3 and n to the power 2.38 it's not much of a difference but trust me it's a lot of difference. n to the power 2.38 is way way better than n to the power 3. If a matrix say for example takes an hour in n cube that can, then you try to estimate how much time it will take in n to the power uh, 2.8 and you can calculate it, okay? So, for example, uh, let's hit Python, okay? So, suppose n to the power 3 takes 3000, uh, one hour, that is 3600 seconds, okay? Now, that would mean that it would take somewhere around uh, 12 into 12 into 12, let's see now, 12 into 12 into 12 is less, 20, uh, 15, I'm just, I'm not computing cube root, I'm just, so it will take something like 15.7, uh, 15.5 or something like that, that would be uh, uh, one hour, but if you say, import math math dot power i'm not sure 2 to the power uh, sorry 15 to the power that much was that i'm not sure about the calculation anymore but i forgot the all the function calls it has been some time since i programmed in python the idea is that you should not do nested for loops okay it's very bad in terms of performance okay when we will cover data structures and algorithms then we will see that how a better algorithm can result in uh, much shorter uh, execution time the so performance is at a premium in, when we are dealing with rust rust is not uh, used for doing uh, low performance work when you are programming in rust 
One of the key features of craft is speed, other than safety. So safety and uh, performance are key features of craft. Therefore, uh, when we are programming in Rust, try to make sure that uh, your nested for loops are kept at a minimum. This is true even more so for interpreted languages because they are slower in nature, they will take even more time. So better algorithms have even higher place in there. Okay. So with this, I will come to the end of this video and I hope that you have enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe if you are not subscribed to the channel and like the video. If you are not subscribed, subscribe it and make sure that you press the bell icon so that you can get notifications about the upcoming videos. This Rust playlist will continue for quite some time and uh, there are other uh, playlists also going. There are four playlists currently running. So if you subscribe and like, uh, then uh, YouTube algorithms uh, suggest this video to more people and more people can benefit from it. That's how it works. So, uh, have a nice day, I guess. Thank you.